I think we're just gonna we're just gonna go for without the video, uh, unfortunately. But we'll, uh, we'll kind of uh, uh, you know, obviously this uh, this link I'll I'll send it out afterwards so you guys all have it, and we'll we'll show you the um, the main screen from it really quick here. <clears throat> Is it going to be adopted or just potential? So, so yeah, so um, it's a good question. So so basically, what they're um, Right. What they're uh, going to be doing is that they said come 2019, all of those things listed will more than likely be in, in the rules of law. Well, yeah, it's still two years. Yeah. Um, that'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, really, the big thing is supposed to be in the front of January 1 of 2020. So at 19, though. So you, 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 can, you can kind of see them here. So that I mean, here's here's basically the, the five main ones. Uh, you're you're going to reduce the lost ball time from five minutes to three minutes. Uh, they're going to allow spike marks to be repaired on the greens, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and then also the one I think that's probably the most controversial or the one that, that uh, most questions is allowing to be able or the, to the uh, ability to drop from any height. Um, so, you know, one one person, a uh, Craig Craig said, "Well, can they drop from from here near the ground as far away?" And it's totally different than dropping from here. So I I would guess that they'll probably come out with uh, you know, maybe some some type of of a limit on that. But uh, I think they're trying to get away from if someone just underhands and throws it as a point of dropping it, it's going to be the same thing roughly. And the emphasis on using red stakes for water hazards. Uh, I think I think Jim, you were talking, or someone on there was talking earlier. I, I think that's just a, just a way to get away from using yellow and confusing people. So the more red they can use, the easier it is. Uh, there, there's obviously going to be some places that they that they may want to continue yeah. using yellow because it's an integral part of playing the whole. Um, like 17 at at TPC, I mean, you you would want to make that a yellow water hazard, but if it if it <coughs> creek that's as wide as this table and it's in front of a green and there's you know 10 yards between the this creek and the and the um, green and what's you know, what's the point of making it yellow versus red I and mean, it's not there's probably not going to be a, that big of, a, of an advantage gain so uh, but I, I, I think it's interesting it's it's a sign of, of things to come hopefully they'll be able to uh, do this and, and, and many more I don't know if anyone else has any comments or anything about this, but I, I thought it was interesting and something definitely worth sharing. And the last sorry. one that we think is just estimating the distance what two oh, club lengths is. is that what that's supposed to be? Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not 100 sure of, of what that last one. Yeah, the uh, club lengths, and I would maybe maybe they'll go completely to your nearest point of relief, or maybe they'll just say you know whatever is. Get you know actual leave. I, I'm not really sure what they what they mean on that one, but it would be well, interesting. Well, they can, they can drop from any height; it doesn't really matter. Well, they're going to have to have something for water does, hazard. Depending on a course condition. How would you two club lunch? I mean, can you take it a hundred yards? We don't have any heads up for uh, this, do we? Yeah. Maybe maybe instead of two, they could use one. I one think for nearest point of relief, they might just use. The, you know, use your driver as opposed to the club that you were. Yeah, in. right. What yeah. Is that? I think they'd That's use what I think too. Yeah, or, or you know, maybe for, for a hazard, you know, maybe they just say instead of taking two club lengths, you just take your stance where you're where you're not standing the hazard and you drop there. And if it's you know, it's probably going to be closer than that two club lengths, except with a few exceptions. You have an uphill side of wise, but it, it's. It, it leaves open a lot of things. I'm not sure exactly if, if other associations or, or you know the RNA has ever had rules different than the two club lengths, one length, uh, one club length. But I think it's interesting. I'm sure they'll define it. Yeah. The spike marks is confusing to me because uh, on a lot of courses that aren't kept up, you know, with the, we don't we wear the rubber ones, but a lot of times you've got a lot of twisting action if there's a lot of play. I mean, mm -hmm. what's going to constitute a, a rough looking yeah, twist mark? It wouldn't surprise me if they just said fix everything on the green. 
Is it, are you going to be able to tap everything down? Or? Yeah, I would. I would kind of side with Dan. I, I I think they're probably just going to say if it if it's a human imperfection and in, yeah, 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 exactly. You know, go go ahead and, and make it. Just bring your own room there. So, mm -hmm. Then they got to fix the whole divots in the uh, fairways. It's kind of a room. <laughs> Ground into a chair. Oh, you mean if the ball goes out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's a, in the video here, um, you know, one of the other things they, they talk about towards the end, um, a Charlie Reimer kind of kind of weighs in on, on that. Uh, and then uh, Matt Janella at, at uh, Golf Channel have created their own kind of Right. Casual rules, and, uh, and he's he's hoping that, that the USA moves more towards that model. He he understands that they're not going to use those super casual rules for elite level competition, but he says that it's a good uh, move in the right direction to kind of get away from that, or to get away from the um, how complicated this this thing is now. It's just it's too many pages, um, but it is the reason that we're all here, right? So I guess there's. <laughs> There's something to be said Speaking about it. For the amount of money we're getting paid, absolutely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gene, if you, I don't know if you want to go over what uh, we, we heard from the USGA in regards to uh, Tom, Tom Hamilton's situation. Yeah, is Tom out there? He is, yeah, he is. So how do you get this stuff? Shut up. I, I called the USGA and the rules department, the guy that answered, said, I'll have to talk to some people because I don't know the answer. Can't get any audio? Yeah. Huh? So, yeah, he got back to Why me the next day and he said, I talked to some people and they don't think it's a two-stroke penalty, which I really disagree with because of the wording. But then I emailed Mark Wilson and Mark had an interesting on it, he said it's not a 13 violation, but look at one dash two. We've already talked about that. Kyle talked about that. Look at the wording in one dash two. A player must not take any action with the intent to influence the movement of a ball in play or alter physical conditions with the intent of affecting the playing of the whole. So if you look at decision 1-2 slash 3, this guy breaks off a bush. It is not in the area in which he's going to drop the ball, but it is just outside of that area where the ball might roll, and he might have a problem with it. So Mark is saying, could it fall under here? Mark didn't say it falls under here. He said, what do you think, Gene? Could it fall mm -hmm. under here? I still don't think so, um, because he still hasn't declared to anybody his options, which option he's going to take. So I would sort of like to write it up and send it to the USGA and have the guys that really know come up with an answer. However, I'm not sure they're going to spend much time when they're trying to redo the entire book. It sort of is maybe irrelevant at this point. When they come to a decision, could we call it the Tom Hamilton rule? Yes, <laughs> I think so. We'll identify in our books that way. I mean, Mark started to ask, uh, did the referee ask him why he pulled out the weeds? And I said, answered Mark, I said, Mark, there's no referee. This, you know, we're, we're dealing with a rule. Can he do this or can he do it? There's never going to be a referee. And what his intent was, was it right. to take care of the golf course and all that kind of stuff. That's in the U.S. Open or at Augusta where you have a referee and he's going to ask him all that stuff. But there aren't any weeds at Augusta. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> there are in the woods. <laughs> there are very few in the woods. <laughs> so we don't have an answer yet because we have two different answers. But we tried. <laughs> All right, uh, so thanks Jane for that, for following up with that. Uh, this week we are going to talk about Rule 14 with the exception of uh, Rule 14-3. Rule 10 with the exception of 10-1, 11, 12, 
and 16 and 17. So um, a lot of rules, but not, not a lot of content in each one. <clears throat> All right, so first uh, 14, striking the ball. Right, so uh, fairly striking the ball. The ball must be fairly struck at with the head of the club and must not be pushed, scraped, or spooned. If that uh, happens, then we're going to have a two-stroke penalty, there, right? Uh, the, the big addition to 14-1 uh, for, for last year was the uh, anchoring. And I know that uh, a lot of you guys that attended the uh, rule session with Mark Wilson, he did a good job of explaining it. Uh, but basically, starting to 2016, uh, player is not able to anchor either directly or by the use of an anchor point. So uh, what they mean by directly is when the player, when the player intentionally holds the club or a gripping hand in contact with any part of his body, except that the player may hold the club or a gripping arm against a hand or a forearm. So what that would mean is basically, imagine Bernhard Longer who has his, the club up in his chest here and has a hand up here and uses that. That's, that's not legal. So he, um, and then there'll be a picture here to kind of show that in a little bit. The second one, the anchor point, an anchor point exists when the player intentionally holds a forearm in contact with any part of his body to establish a gripping hand as a stable point around which the other hand may swing the club. So that one is more where you have, let's say, your, your forearm or your elbow tied to your body, your side of your body, and you have a hand here and a hand farther down separated making a movement. That's that's not allowed. And we'll, and we'll show that in a little bit in the next uh, slide here. <clears throat> so here, here's the graphic from the USGA. Uh, everything in the blue there is is allowed. So you see this first one here uh, is the claw grip. That's that's fine. And then you got your traditional cross, uh, this looks like a cross-handed grip, um, which is okay. This one is a long putter, but it's not anchored. So that's that's what uh, Bernhard Longer does now. Is he he actually practice strokes with an with an anchor, but before he hits it, uh, he moves it out away from his body, which is okay as long as he doesn't make a stroke with an anchor uh, stroke. He can practice with, with an anchor one. That's fine. And then uh, we got traditional, and then you got a few other different ones here. You got. Uh, like, Kind of Matt Kuchar esque, where you got the, the shaft a little bit farther up uh, on the forearm, but still below the elbow. Then the ones that aren't allowed in the red here, you've got the one where the club is tied to the body, that's the top one there. The one that's kind of anchored in uh, by a body part here into your stomach, but also in, this is connected to the player's chin here, um, so that's not allowed. And then this is that one uh, that's that's yeah. across the body. Yeah, that's that's against the body, and and the, and the reason that this one, you know, you you can you can have your arms against your body, um, just the the hands themselves have have to be together when you do it. So a lot of people will put with their you know with their forearms or, or their elbows connected to their body, keep a nice smooth stroke there. So if the hands are together, but, you're okay. Yeah, exactly. It's when they go apart. It's, it's when they're apart, so that so that you're using one as a stable point to swing the other one around. Um, and then there's a there's a good decision in there uh, that kind of talks about this. It's 14 dash one b slash two. One what? One b dash two thirteen. Yeah, two thirteen. Yeah. So that 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 one will will really kind of describe exactly what that what that anchor point is. Um, it's. Uh, I think that's the hardest thing to, to get your arm around is, you know, what, when is it anchoring if you're connected to your body? I mean, sometimes it is and sometimes it is, but it, it really comes down to, to where the hands are. If the hands are together, it's, it's not going to be an issue. It's, it's, it's when they're uh, separated that it becomes an issue. And then also in, in the decision below it, it talks about, it, it, it gives a definition of, of what the forearm is. So the forearm is any part of the arm below the elbow joint and includes the wrist.
And then, um, I always move mine unless yeah. I want to say something. <laughs> yeah, but don't go up to 14 1 for a second. Yeah. So you can hit the ball with the back of the block. Right? So oh, I have to hit him with the and take him swing at him mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. as well as the front, obviously, the front of the slot. Uh, is someone trying to talk right now? You're, you're on the other not coming through. Um, I'm going to go on the game today. This sounds like a business. Yeah, I was sending my grandkids in bubble cookies. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, just just to give you a, 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 a different example of uh, what what anchoring is and, and what it isn't, here here's a good example here from uh, an instructor, former player uh, Steve Scott, who won the 1999 Western Am and uh, trivia for anyone that uh, can explain what what he's famous for, Steve. He, he was uh, played against Tiger Woods, and I don't know what amateur final. I can't remember yeah. what year it was. Yeah, it was the it was the nineteen ninety six uh, U.S. Amateur. He lost to Tiger in the, in the final match. He was uh, it was a it was a great match. He was famously known as the last uh, amateur that Tiger ever beat because the next day Tiger turned pro. Um, so <coughs> we'll uh, bring up the video here, hopefully, and um, show you exactly kind of what. His his approach to this. So he he talks about it in the uh, in the video that he uh, has has had issues with with putting in the past, and he kind of talks about um, a solution uh, that that he's came up with. And so uh, chances are we probably won't have any audio, but at least with this one we can see it. Um, eventually when it comes up. <laughs> and, but it, it, it is very interesting because you would you would think that this would be anchoring, uh, but it's a, it's a creative way to kind of get around it. He uh, he also went to Florida, so maybe that's where he gets the view. But he does he does explain it in the video here. Um, where where the gator gets from, or where the gator name comes from. We may have to sit through some uh, some advertisements. We can't we can't get away from the ads that are everywhere. Um, hopefully, no one's hungry. Um, Subway commercial. <laughs> And uh, Steve, Steve Scott, he was actually at uh, Oakland Hills this, this summer for the uh, U.S. Amateur. I think he spoke to the players or something like that. But, um, this, this was the 20th year anniversary of his defeat against Tiger. Uh, but he, he's, a, he's a teaching pro up in, uh, up in the Met area. And uh, here we'll get, well, you should be able to see it here, hopefully. Kind of what it looks like. Basically, in the first part of the video, he um, he kind of combined the four different uh, four different putting strategies: he used Stu Stricker, Matt Kuchar, um, Chris DeMarco, and uh, Bernhard Longer as as his model for kind of building this. I wonder if he married his caddy. Huh? So I wonder right. if he married his caddy. He did. He did. did he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. That's all I remember from the match.
And so he, he, he almost said it there. Um, he, you'll, you'll see it here in a little bit. We'll do the whole thing. All right, any time now, Steve. Come on. Yeah, what's yeah. When you get Charlie there. Yeah. He likes to talk. All right, here we go. Oh, now he's got the, the grip between his hand and his forearm, correct? Right. Correct, okay. yeah. So we can, maybe we can take it back and pause it at the... Yeah. I just couldn't see how much of the grip was. So you, so, you, so you can see it right there. So he has he has it uh, technically <coughs> braced. braced, anchored, I guess you yeah. so to speak. But it, but it's it's below the forearm, or it's 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 not it's it's, it's still part of the forearm. So it's it, it's all right. Um, correct, correct. Yep, below the elbow is the definition of the of the uh, forearm. So I think this is a very interesting way um, as as someone. That, you know, he, he admitted that he has had uh, problems with putting. Uh, he said the, the dreaded Y word since he was 18. Um, so he, you know, he's kind of found this way to, to help to help him get around it. And I think it's uh, interesting, maybe something for people at you know your guys' clubs or people that you know that might be struggling with with it. Uh, you know, we know that uh, Bernhard Longer, he's he's just moved his approach out, taking it away from his body. People like Adam Scott have moved to, to a, a traditional uh, style of putting. So there's different ways around it, but I think this is more uh, something that would be useful for amateur golfers uh, that you see that uh, does still allow for uh, a more calm and, and steady stroke, but still follow the rules as they're, as they're listed in the book. <coughs> All right, so we'll jump back over to the PowerPoint here. What's happening? It's just it's just taking a while to load <laughs> back up. So sorry about this. So. Hey, Kyle. Yeah. This is Bill. Um, not for this discussion, maybe, but, you know, it appears to me or that on this whole anchoring thing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it may not be till the third or fourth hole that a player would run into a rules official that knows what's going on with the anchoring thing. It seems to me like we better give some thought to trying to be a little more proactive uh, with the players. I don't know, uh, <clears throat> you know, at the at the first tee off or something, to ask them if they're going to be doing any anchoring or using standard or approach for putting or something because it's going to be a mess. Yeah, no, no, I. I uh... I definitely agree that you know communicating this to the players. Um, you know, I think we they've, they've they've had a year to adjust to it. Um, is it 
it did start last year, but uh, you know, sending out something again uh, at some point in time, especially when we communicate about the, the new local rule with the um, accidental movement of ball and putty drain would, would, would be right. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I, I think that would be worthwhile because it could be just a, I mean, just what you're going through, how many different people have different ideas and right. what anchoring and what isn't anchoring and uh, get out on a golf course in the middle of a tournament and have this come up is just uh, disastrous in my opinion. No, definitely, definitely agree with that. All right, uh, so, so next up, uh, 14-2 assistance. So uh, pick player cannot accept um, while, sorry, so while making a stroke, um, Cannot, cannot accept physical assistance or protection from the elements. Um, now, what about can a player hold their own umbrella while they're, while they're putting? Is that all right? Yes. Yep, yep, that's all right. They just can't uh, have someone else do it for them. So, positioning of the caddy or partner behind the ball, uh, that's, that's also uh, not allowed. So, it cannot be positioned close to an extension on the, of the line of play or the line of putt behind the ball. Uh, there are a few exceptions to that. Uh, there's no penalty uh, if your caddy does that or your partner does it, and there was no in intent or they were inadvertently located there. If they were just, if this was their first time out looping and they happened to be standing behind you when, when you when you hit a shot, um, as long as there was no intent, uh, then they, they would be okay there. Right, it's so, surprising how many players don't know that rule. Oh, yeah, right. definitely. Definitely, especially dealing with uh, you know a lot of a wide range of caddies that you see at the Michigan Amateur. You got uh, anywhere from people that have been working at the clubs that know what they're doing to some you know some friend that's maybe never been on a golf course before. So it's a, it's a wide range of people, definitely. And just as many think it also applies to over there, and it doesn't. I mean, that's all. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Well, on this one, you have to be a little careful depending on the uh, on the type of tournament because a partner can stand behind. Right. So, so we'll, yeah. So we'll get to to that here. Um, okay. In a, in a little bit. But yes. No, you're right. For um, well. Actually, no, Jim. That's not right. Okay, right. Partner can. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're right. So yeah. Partner, partner, partner cannot. Um, sorry, I, I was thinking about order of play, which we'll get to in a little bit. Yeah, part, partner is it, it's, it's not allowed. In, just like his head on that. Okay. Sounds like they are hard. All right. So if if we do have an issue with this, it'll be a loss hole penalty and match play and two strokes and uh, stroke play. All right. So striking a ball more than once. If a player's club strikes the ball more than once in the course of a stroke, the player must count the stroke and add a penalty stroke, making two strokes and all. So uh, it doesn't matter how many times they, if they double hit it, triple hit it, quadruple hit it, um, you know, the more the merrier, it's only going to count two strokes. Yeah, yeah, so, so TC Chen was the 1985 uh, US Open. He ended up losing to Andy North, I believe. Um, and his, uh, his initials were TC, and I guess he quickly got the, the nickname Two Chip, uh, which is convenient <laughs> to go with his initials there. And then you play the ball where it lies. Correct, yep, yep. Play the ball as it lies. That, that's a great point there. All right, and the next two things we're going to talk about are um, two situations where, believe it or not, uh, <coughs> we're, we're make, trying to make golf more complicated to hit the ball when it's actually moving, which is uh, kind of shocking to me. But, anyways, uh, I guess it could happen. So. A player must not make a stroke at a moving ball or at a ball while it's moving, with the exception of if the ball is falling off a tee. If you strike it more than once, which we just mentioned, and then also, which we'll talk about next, is a ball moving in water. And so, those are the, the times when you can't hit the ball when it's moving. Uh, if you do hit a ball that's that's moving, uh, you're going to get a penalty, which we'll get to on the, on the next slide, but. Um, the, the important thing here is uh, it's important to determine when the ball started moving. So uh, when the ball begins to move only after the player has begun the stroke or the backward movement of his club for the stroke, 
he incurs no penalty. So if you're if you start your backswing and the ball starts moving after that, and you continue it and and hit and, and make a stroke, that's fine. There's not going to be a penalty. But let's say that you're you're addressing the ball and the ball starts to move, and then you start your backswing. Well, then then you're going to have a two-stroke penalty at a minimum, and then potentially, uh, well, actually no, but you'll have you'll, you'll have two strokes. Um, and then I guess you'll have to de determine whether you cause the ball to move, but I still I still believe that would only be a two stroke penalty. Um, so I'll go ahead and say that again. Yeah. So so if if you if if the ball starts to move before you start your backswing, and 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 you make a stroke at it, the ball you're you're going to get a two stroke penalty. Except if it's on the putting green. And you, yeah, and I mean, you didn't well, cause well, it to, yes. Right. Well, yeah, this they need to change I don't, that. I don't, yeah, is that I'm trying to think if that would be? It's just you don't get I, a penalty under this rule, but you still could get a penalty under Rule 18. Yeah, I, I don't That's know, what it, except, well, except on the putting green, right? yeah, if that local rule is in effect. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. right. <clears throat> Right, but I, but I don't, I don't know if, if right, but I, I don't, I don't know if that would apply because if the ball's moving and, and you hit it, it's still. I mean, we're we're talking about the ball moving before you you start making a putt, and then and then when it, after it starts moving, you start your backswing and hit it. I, I still think based on this rule, it would be a two-stroke penalty. So don't no, you, it's just two well. situations. You have on the green one situation, and then. Off the green is another situation. It says right here, when the ball begins to move after the player has begun the stroke or the backward movement of the stroke, he gets no penalty under this rule, but he's not exempt from any penalty under Rule 18. So he's still going to get a penalty for having his cause, well, if he has caused his ball to move. Right, but, 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 but Except that was saying, the green. That was saying that it was only after the player began oh. the stroke. What if, what if, what if the player... What if the ball moved and the player hadn't started started the backward movement of the swing? What if it moves, then they start the backward movement of the putt and hit it? I think it's still a two, a two stroke penalty. What? Well, where are you getting two strokes? It, well, in the next slide here, it's two, two strokes. <laughs> That's what. For stroke play for a breach of fifteen or six or sorry fourteen dash mm -hmm. five or fourteen dash six yeah. that should be. Um, so we'll. I want to look into that one a little bit more, but um, if yeah, if you if he's going to do the happy gun more, he's going to get two. Yes, yeah, okay, right. yeah. Although I guess that ball was at rest, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you know, I, I don't. Hopefully, this this uh, situation will come up too much, but uh, it, it is uh, important to know that, that yes, you know, we need to that's know only when, one. when the ball moves. Mm -hmm. uh, and when the stroke was started, it, it does make a difference. He's two. We're hitting a moving ball. He's two. So 14 and 6, this is when a ball is moving in water in a water hazard. So again, this is a very specific area talking about in, in water in a water hazard. It's not just in water. So if, if your ball is moving in, in casual water uh, through the green, this, this rule would not apply to that. All right, so as uh, stated, uh, if you if, if there is a breach of Rule 14-5 or 14-6, it's the loss of whole penalty and not play two strokes and strokes. Kyle? Yeah. There was a question on the national rules exam several years ago. Golfer hits their ball into a creek. They get down and they see it moving. They wait for it to stop, at which point they made a stroke. Is there a penalty? Mm -hmm. How long did he wait? Yeah. yeah. Just, well, no, the question didn't have to do with undue delay. It had to do with 14 6. Well, it's, you're not allowed to let it meander move, down move the down stream until it gets to a sandbar and now play it. That's why he asked what he asked. Yeah, no, I, and that was the, the answer was yes. And apparently, what they're saying is that you're entitled to hit it while it's moving, but if, you, if, but if it stops, then it has improved its lie, so you can't wait for it to stop. I mean, I'd look at it the other way. I mean, he's just waiting for it to stop to see what he wants to do. 
it might be improved. It might be something that at that point he wants to use the water hazard rule to take it out. But right. I'm just telling you what, yeah, the, no, what that, the national folks said was, if you wait for it to stop and not taking undue delay into account, right. that it is a penalty. Hmm. Interesting. That's where you take a lot of time selecting your club for the shot. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't selected my club yet. I was going to do it here in that move, so then I have to do it. Again. All right, so here's uh, here are some key decisions from, from this uh, rule. And, and when I say key decisions, this is uh, completely based on uh, the, the uh, decisions where I went to rule school and they said study these or they presented these on the screen. Uh, so I just assumed that, the, that they would be in the building. Uh, so that's, that's why they're up here. All right, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is Charlie Dupree. If the player's on the green and he addresses the ball, the club is behind the ball, and the ball starts to move before he started his swing, um, and does he need to – he needs to wait till it finishes or he, he needs to replace it and then take a shot? And, and, and the penalty would determine whether or not he caused it to move or whether wind and topography or whatever caused it to move, right? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, he would he would definitely uh, want to want to wait and not and not hit it while it's moving because um, based on the based on my interpretation, uh, if, if he hasn't started his swing and the ball starts to move and he hits it, that would be a penalty. However, with the new local rule, um, I don't I don't uh, think that he would be penalized uh, whether. You know, if he if he accidentally caused the ball to move or it was wind or whatever, he wouldn't he wouldn't be penalized either way. Um, so the the decision for the rules official would be, you know, whether whether it was natural causes that, that made that ball move or whether the player himself caused it to move accidentally. And then if it was accidental, he'd move it back, play it. If it was if it was wind or natural reasons, he would play it from where it came to rest. So he. If it started to roll before he took a stroke, he'd back off, wait for it to get there. If it's determined that natural conditions caused it to move, he plays it from there. Correct. Where, where it ended up. Correct. And then if, if it was determined that he accidentally caused it to move, and then you would put it back where it was before it started moving and then play it, no penalty. Still no penalty. Got yep. it. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions on 14? All right, uh, order of play, rule of 10. So 10-1 match play, uh, we're going to save this one for later when we talk about match play. We'll wrap our head completely around match play when we get there because um, it, it, it is important. Uh, the order of play is, is important for match play. Uh, stroke play, I think everyone here uh, knows exactly how, you know, how this works, but basically on the first team round, the, the honor is going to be determined by draw. Or uh, if there's not uh, scores or anything or, or rank to determine that, uh, it will be decided by lot or by random. So typically, you'll have you'll you'll see the, the player with the with the best score tee off first. Uh, it's a multi-day tournament, and the last day of the tournament, the leader will usually go off first. Uh, and then throughout the throughout the round at each hole, the person with the lowest score will will have the honor for the next hole. Uh, there is an exception to that, and Handicap, bogey, par, stable for competitions, that will be the low net score, not the low gross score. Um, so it's a little wrinkle there. Uh, during the play of the hole, as everyone knows, it's the person that's farthest away. If people are equally far away, you just, just decide by lot. Uh, yeah, what's the uh, rules of golf decision regarding if you're on the putting green and you want to continue as part, as long as you're not standing in someone's line of putt. Some, some players object to it. Yeah, I mean, I, some, yeah, some well, so, so for, for a stroke play, uh, this is, I mean, match play, that's, that's it's, not, but uh, yeah. a stroke play, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of really up to, up to the group. I mean, if it, typically the, the way that the player would do it is they would, they would ask the other players, are, are, are you all right if I finish? Um, and then, you know, nine times out of ten, they're going to say, yeah, go ahead. Um, but 
you know, there could be situations where they said, no, I, I, I prefer you to wait. Um, I don't know if anyone else here has any, but I, I mean, that's, that's what we do in all our tournaments. You know, if we can put out, <coughs> we'll put out, you know, if you're going to stand in somebody's line, going to interfere, then you're going to mark. Right. And, uh, but I know, I've never had anybody tell me, no, mark it. Right. You know, if we want to put out if you can. You sure. Do it. Sure. I think it comes out of the speed of play rule. Right. You don't play because if you park your ball, it's going to take a lot more time to park the right. to finish it. Right. So it's a discussion of a new thing? Right, yeah. There's a there's no rule that says that says that you can't um in stroke play that, that you can't continue as putt. It's it's more of a uh etiquette thing in terms of you wouldn't want to be stepping in someone's line, uh, especially now uh that uh, you can't replace a spike mark. So if, if you were to make their line worse uh, in theory that that could hurt a player. So it's more of an etiquette thing than an actual rule rule of golf. There's there's no decision um, saying that, that you can't continue as putt. Uh, there used to be up to nope. Notice that there's no there's no penalty statement in this rule. There's no red printing. There's no penalty statement. So there, there are a few exceptions, uh, except the rule 22 of ball assisting or, or interfering play. Uh, if, if it's easier for that person to play first, uh, you know, they can, even if they're close to the hole, there's no issues there. And then rule 31-4, which is uh, four ball stroke play. So your partner, uh, the, the side has, has the ability to decide which, which person goes first. It could be one that's closer to the hole or it could be one that's farther. Uh, if, if you have someone that's probably from needle from 30 feet and someone that has a tap and birdie from a foot, you know, they're probably going to have that person putting for birdie go first so they can get that in the, in the hole and then give that person with the needle a better shot at, at making it. Uh, so, and then another thing too in here, uh, this is this is more for, for uh, match play because we'll get to, to it in stroke play here, but uh, when, it, when it becomes known that the original ball is not to be played as it lies, and the competitor is required to play the ball as nearly as possible at the spot from which the original ball was last played. Uh, the order of play is determined by the spot from which the previous stroke was made. Um, however, when a ball may be played from a spot other than where the previous stroke was made, the order of play is determined by the position where the original ball came to rest. So the difference there is the difference between someone hitting it out of bounds and they know they have to go back to where they last played from, or someone hit it in a lateral water hazard where they have five options, or I guess four options, uh, outside of the hazard to, to uh, okay. So there, if when the hazard, you would determine where, where the ball is, not, but out of bounds, it's not where the ball is, it's where you are, you're gonna be hitting from. So again, more important in match play, because uh, as we'll get to here, uh, with, the, with the only exception of if players are playing out of turn, uh, there is no penalty, uh, however, if the committee determines that competitors have agreed to play out of turn to give one of them advantage, they're disqualified. So in stroke play, this really isn't an issue. Um, it, it's, I mean, we we would probably encourage people uh, to not to not go by the honor system or the, the order of, of play to play ready golf, uh, as Jeff was saying, keep pace going. Um, so it's it's not not a big deal in stroke play, uh, with the exception that. Um, if you know if they are doing it to give someone an advantage, then you know then we have an issue. And this one, uh, th this is one rule we'll cover later. But making a stroke while another ball is in motion uh, after a stroke from putting green, that that actually is a penalty. Um, so that's that is one exception to this as well. And then the incorrect order in foursome play. So if you're playing foursome stroke play, which is alternate shot. If the wrong person hits the tee shot, you do need to fix that. Uh, it would be a two stroke penalty, and then if you don't go back and fix it, you're going to be disqualified. So that would be kind of the same as playing from the wrong team draw, which we'll cover in a little bit here. Uh, also, another thing that's more important for match play than uh, stroke play, but good to know, uh, is that if a player plays a provisional ball or another ball from the tee, he must do so after his opponent or fellow competitor has made his first stroke. If more than one player left to play a provisional ball or is required to play another ball from the tee, the original order of play must be retained. Again, if a player plays a provisional ball or another ball out of turn, uh, rule 10-1C, 
uh, or 10-2C applies, which 10-2C is saying that it's not a, it's not a big deal in stroke play. So if, if they mess this up in stroke play, no big deal. Match play, we, we, we've got a different scenario. All right, key decisions here for rule 10. Any questions? Pretty straightforward there. Is it going to Two A one. Sorry, Darren, go back. No, it's fine. Thank you. All right, uh, rule eleven, the teen ground. All right, so can someone give me the definition of of the teen ground? <laughs> It's yeah, that's the area from the front or the outside of the key marker, two thumbs backwards in a rectangular shape. Perfect. Yep, so Tom, that, that's right. And uh, he, he made a uh, very important uh, distinction there to say that it starts from the beginning of the key marker um, as opposed to the last part of it. So um, that's, that's, that's kind of what we're talking about. And if we ever did have to measure if something was within the team ground, that, that's where we would measure. And it's better in the definition than it is in the rules. It's really clearly defined in the definition. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's yeah. very specific. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He asked the question earlier. All right. So uh, team team the ball. So when a player is putting a ball in the play from the team ground, it must be played from within that team ground. So within that rectangle, two club lengths from the front of the tee marker uh, back, um, and from a surface or of the ground or from a conforming tee. So if we don't uh, play from a, a, a crude tee or we're not playing within that uh, that range, we've got an issue. The player makes a stroke from a bad or from a non-conforming tee, they're going to be disqualified. Right now, a player may stand outside the tee ground to play a ball within it. So this is important for everyone that's out there setting tees. We need to keep this in, in, in consideration when we're setting tees that People may not tee the ball up in the middle of the tee. Maybe they're able to use that entire uh, rectangle area that we've defined. And so we need to make sure that both left-handed and, and right-handed players uh, have a good and level stance if we are putting tees near the edge of the boxes. All right, so tee markers. So before a player makes his first stroke, with any ball in the team ground or of the hole being played, the team markers are deemed to be fixed, so I can't move them. Um, in these circumstances, if the player moves or allows the team markers to be moved for the purpose of avoiding interference with the stance or of the swing or his line of play, he's going to incur a two-stroke penalty under Rule 13-2. Now, there's a good decision in there. It's 11 2 slash 2 that talks about a few ex that talks about a few examples of when the, when these key markers are moved and what happens. So we've got five situations that we talk about in that decision. So I'm just going to rattle them off with them looking at it to see if uh, we know what the answers are. So first one is uh, before the, the player moves before making the stroke, um, moves, moves the key markers because because it's in his way, it's in his stance. Do we have a penalty there or no? Yes. yes. Okay, yep, you got a penalty there. <clears throat> uh, the second situation moves, moves the tees before or after uh, because he thinks the committee doesn't know what they're doing and <laughs> they set the tees wrong. Yep. yep. That's going to be a, that's that's gonna right be a penalty wrong. as well, right? All right? How about this one? Uh, they move the before or after they hit their tee shot, they move the tees because, uh, well, let's say this one's after. He hits a shot and, he, and it's going way right, so he runs out dead left, and when he's running, he kicks the tee. Um, penalty or no penalty? No, no, no penalty. No penalty, okay. Next one, um, this player does the same thing um, before, let's say after he hits his tee shot, he hits it way right, and this time he's not going to look at it, he's just really pissed off, so he turns around, <laughs> and takes his club, and just takes it, you know, just hits hits the tee marker, and knocks it up, knocks it five, five minutes. <coughs> penalty or no penalty? No penalty under 11-2, but he may get a penalty under eight. That's right. Yeah, so, so that, that's a good point. There, there's no penalty under this rule, but if if that did happen, we would potentially assess a penalty under 33-7, uh, which is the, the, the etiquette there. Um, so it, hopefully we have we don't see that or um, you know that that doesn't come into play. Uh, but there is no penalty if the player does that by this rule. 
All right, last one. Uh, lists before lists the key markers before or after he plays to admire the the great damn team markers that we have and, and the great woodwork that uh, Tom Anderson did to put those together. <laughs> and then after admiring them, puts them back down and then plays a tee shot. Penalty or no penalty? Yes. No penalty. So if there's no, re you know, if there's if they're just doing it for an unexplained reason, uh, then there, there there's no penalty. Right. And so with all these, the fees need to be set back. Um, that's that's obviously the key. There's no additional penalty, I guess, if they don't put the tees back. But uh, we do we do need the tees to be back so that they are in the same place for everyone that's playing that that uh, that round. Especially when it comes to stroke play. For match play, it's not as big of a deal, but for stroke play, uh, it is important that everyone uh, that's in a specific division is playing from the same set of tees. That question. Yeah. What if you um, you tee your ball up real close to the marker, play a cut or something, and you hit the tee marker and the ball at the same time? Play the ball as it lies. Where it comes it's too strong to suddenly for no stupidity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah. You just play it as it lies. Play it is. No Make sure that it's that on your Put the club away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Whatever's left of it. Yeah. All right, ball falling off the tee. So this is uh, one of the most common jokes in the golf course, right? You get up there, someone's uh, getting ready to hit it, and they they touch it, and then it's like, oh, one. <coughs> no, it's it's not a penalty. You you you, you tee it back up and hit it again. Um, that's that's not a problem. However, if a stroke is made at the ball in this in this circumstance, the ball falling off the tee. Whether the ball is moving or not, the stroke counts, uh, but there's no penalty. So if you continue and, and, and you make a stroke uh, and, and you miss the ball, uh, it, the, the stroke still counts. There's a whiff and everybody laughs. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I've done. So, I, yeah. so I, I have a very interesting story. So I was working for the AJJ at the time we were in. It's a you know, they're pretty, pretty big deal tournaments. And we were in, in uh, Kansas City at Kansas City Country Club, which is the course that Tom Watson grew up at. So it's a very, very you know, upscale club, and, and we're there. And they each each host club gets gets an exemption to the tournament. And this this girl was a member of, of the club, I believe, or, or was affiliated. She gets up to the tee, she takes, she makes a nice swing, swings completely underneath, but the ball falls straight down. Just I'm I'm there starting. She just turns to me, and I'm just like, oh gosh, like. So I, I just tell her, just play it. So she gets up, she she changes her club, she takes out a hybrid, and she just strikes it right on the middle. Just like, I would have never been able to hit that hybrid after <laughs> lifting it on the tee on your home course or whatever. But um, that, that that would be a case where I guess if the ball technically fell off the tee, uh, but she did try to hit it. Um, so she uh, real quick came out. If she retreated it. That would be a penalty. Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. I, yeah, it I, is. I, I, yeah. is it, yes. it yeah. is, and it's an unusual decision. Yeah. If you make a stroke at the ball and it falls off, and it's now on the ground, and the player leans over and picks it up, I would have thought it's two under Rule 18 because you've moved your ball and, fly and failed to replace it. But it's not. You've taken a stroke in distance. But going back to the original location and yeah, re and re -team. But if, if your ball's in the team ground, can't you tee it? Not under that mm -hmm. circumstance. Not if you're good in the yeah. Put your balls in play. Uh, where is that decision? No, no, no. You, where is it? You did that last year. That, under the circumstance you described, no, I mean, you, you can re it. it. I, I because it's stroke and distance. Yes. Yeah, you go back to some rule toward the end of the book. That, um, it's rule, is it rule so 28? It may yeah. be rule 28. That would be toward the end. But you could read to you. Yeah. yeah. Because it's stroke and distance. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can always read to you. I thought you. Okay. Right. Yeah. Actually, you're not hitting three because you have to count the original one. And now the ball is sitting down on the ground, picking it up and putting it on the tee. That's a penalty. Yes, it would be three. Yeah. Yes. It comes out three. Mm-hmm. All right. 
All right, so playing uh, from outside the team ground. So in match play, uh, if the player when starting the, the whole plays from outside the team ground, there is no penalty, but the opponent may immediately require the player to cancel the stroke and play the ball from within the team ground. So uh, that's for match play. But it's not it's not necessarily a penalty. Yes. So the player can can ask them to, to, to re hit it. For stroke play, it is a penalty. Uh, the the uh, it'll be a two stroke penalty, and then that person needs to go back and uh, play a ball from within the team ground. If they don't do that prior to teeing off in the next hole or on the last hole of their tournament or their round stipulated round, leave the putting green, uh, then they're going to be disqualified. Kyle, would it be the same as playing the wrong tee? Yes. So because like it washed it off. You know, when you come off of nine and come down, 13 is the first tee box, right? right? And then 10 is past that, right? Right. right. Well, I was in Pro Am, and Mike, uh, the big guy that used to be here, Mike Erickson, teed off on 13 tee and came back and goes, two stroke penalty, and then came over to 10 with us right. and then teed off from there. Yeah. 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 So, same. So, it's, it's actually the, the same here. Um, Kyle? Yep. If you're refereeing mm -hmm. and somebody tees up outside the teeing ground, you should stop them, even yeah, though this true. rule actually gives the option to the opponent. I mean, if I'm playing and you're my opponent, and I see you're, I may want you to hit it to see whether you do well or not. And if you do well, I want to recall it. But if you're refereeing, you don't let that happen. You just say, you've got to, you've got to put it within the teeing ground. The only time I know that it happened, the girls got out ahead of me leaving seven, going to eight, at uh, Forest Acres West. We got up to eight, and the girl all day long had been teeing right at the forward edge of the box. Teed the ball up out of the box and striked it. When I got over there, caught up with them, the other, her opponent said the ball was outside the box, so she hadn't picked up the tee yet. Ah. So we put the ball back on a tee, and sure enough, you know, once you straighten the line, it's outside the box. So she had the right to recall the shot, and her second shot went in the hazard. <laughs> so it, it doesn't always work out. But, but just for the record, Tom, aren't the girls always ahead of you? <laughs> no, I try to stay the hell away. Ahead of them because they go too fast. Tom, St. Clair Golf Club last year. Mm -hmm. uh, net match play, yeah. the stroke play qualifier. Yeah. Well, we had a couple of guys that turned the wrong way, played the wrong way. Yeah, they, they, they came off of nine, and instead of going to uh, ten. ten, where they should have, they went to one because the tee boxes had been changed. And they had played their years before and didn't know it. So they played two holes, and they came back and said, we think we screwed up. Well, yeah, you did. So go ahead and play the rest of your round and go enjoy your lunch, but you won't be in a match play. Right. In, in that case, because they played the other holes. Yeah, they played. They, they were just on board. Sure. Yeah. They're on the wrong hole. If they had not finished that wrong hole, if they, if they hadn't finished, teed off, if they teed off on, the next on the next hole, so right. I guess it would be the two, then, then they would have been okay. But they played two holes. Right. Yeah. Because Before they, when they got up the number three, they realized this, this can't be right. Right. So doesn't matter if you're the scorecard and they said, oh, this, this says yeah. doesn't doesn't matter if you're playing the white. They hadn't recognized the holes they'd already played? On the right hole. Well, no, 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 they, they start. They could have been a shotgun. Yeah, or the shotgun. Shot 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 you the don't have a shotgun in that tournament. Stroke play. Restart Did you have a shotgun? Yeah. Oh, okay. In stroke. Okay. And they, it was a uh, uh, it was uh, the kid that was in today um, returned a trophy. Mikhail. Yeah, Mikhail's brother. His brother Mike. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I teased him about it all year. Every time I said, uh, He's actually a nice guy. Yeah, I ask him. I'd always ask him, are you going the right direction? <laughs> well. Yeah. Hi. Uh, again, Charlie. Um, just to clarify for me, is in in match play, if they play from outside the teeing ground, they can re tee it. But they're if the if their opponent makes them re tee it, 
there is no penalty. He just has to replay it. No, if the, the, the opponent can say, ah, go ahead, you don't have to replay it, That's what there is no penalty and he keeps going, right? Uh, in match play? Correct, yeah. So, so in, in match play, the, the uh, that decision has, has the ability to, to ask the player to 18 hit dash if two they want. Slash if they don't, they just keep playing, there's no penalty. If they do say re hit it, there's still no penalty, they just have to re hit the pinch shot. Okay, but in stroke play, he has to, and if he doesn't, then he's off on the next hole, he's out. Correct. In stroke play. Okay. Yep. And then, Hello? Yep. Oh, this is John Rollins. Hey, we just had a discussion about guys who play a wrong hole and then play a couple holes. 11 mm -hmm. 5 slash 4 says they're not disqualified. Well, they correct it. Yeah. They have to correct it as well. Well, yeah, they, yes, right. They have to, but they could play several holes out of order no. and not oh, be no, disqualified. Even under 18 2, he's still hitting three. No, right? they, didn't, they didn't play several holes. No, they played yeah, they, That's right. They, they played one hole, but. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was just the, the, the T. So, so, yeah, but so. They, they, didn't, they didn't complete the hole either. Right. But it, but it says that strokes played at the 15th hole when it played out of order did not count. Right. right. That's right. right. If they correct it. Yep. So, so in, in, in the very yeah. last part on the, on the slide here, uh, the, the uh, strokes from, from outside the team ground and any subsequent strokes uh, don't, don't count. Um, so we just kind of throw those out. They, in, in stroke play, they get two stroke penalty and they start, they start from, from what, when their, their actual tee shot goes into play. That, that would be So as we, we uh, we're talking about playing from a wrong team ground, uh, the provisions of Rule 11-4 apply, so the same as playing uh, from a or from outside the team ground. And uh, this, this does happen uh, quite a bit. We had it happen at the, the net match play. We also had it happen at the, the GAM Junior Invitational last year as well. Um, so it, it, it does happen. Um, but uh, you know, we we try to do everything we can from a committee standpoint to make the tees as uh, identifiable as possible. And there's a lot of odd odd formats. You know, Dan, you mentioned washing off. I I well, when I was working there, I actually put the uh, the tent that we put up in, in the table on the wrong tee because I had no idea. Yeah. Um, so it it, it it does happen. And luckily, I didn't I didn't get a two stroke penalty for that. But, uh, you know, <laughs> Maybe maybe just a laugh, but that's you just yeah, that's fine. Home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the is paid. It would have been a short ride home, so uh, that would have been all right by me. But, uh, but yeah, so playing from wrong team grounds is going to be the same as it is playing from outside the team ground. Kyle, can I ask one question? Yeah, of course, Dave. Um, it's um, so the. The thing about that is if they don't complete the first hole that they play out of order. Right. Then it becomes, and, and then they go back and correct it. Then it becomes two strokes and move on. Right. Or, but or if, if they, they, they completed out. that first hole. But you can't teal. <coughs> Correct. So it's, it's, it's not necessarily pulling out. It's, it's teeing off on the next hole. Sorry, I, I, I didn't catch myself there. So they, they, they can finish that hole, but they can't tee off on the next hole. Um, or in the instance of it's, if it's their last goal of the day, they can't leave the green without going back. Okay, so they could go ahead and play that first wrong hole completely. Right. And if they realize it then, then it's two strokes and move on. Right, yeah. So Great. a lot of times, you know, you, uh, you'll see it happen where they'll play one wrong hole and then they'll get out to write their score and they'll be like, well, that was supposed to be a part three, but we just played a part four. It's, something's wrong here. And Great, so okay. Thank you. That's a way for them to catch that, yep. All right, uh, key, key decision here for Rule 11, 11-2 11 slash 2, that's the one with the T markers and what's a penalty and what's not a penalty. It's a good one. All right, any questions? All right. Rule 12, searching for and identifying the ball. So Gene uh, did a great job of covering the majority of this last week, so you won't uh, recover anything she did and just reinforce it. Uh, but there are a few situations that uh, weren't in bunkers. 
Now that, that we'll talk about in this rule. All right, so seeing a ball, searching for a ball, a player is not entitled to see his ball when making a stroke or not necessarily entitled. And so in searching for the ball anywhere on the course, uh, anywhere on the course, the player may touch or bend long grass, rushes, bushes, winds, whatever those are, heather or the like, but only to the extent necessary to find or identify the ball. Provided that this does not improve the lie of the ball, the area of his intended stance or swing, or his line of play. If the ball is moved, Rule 18-2 applies, except as provided in the following four situations. <coughs> in addition to the methods of searching for identifying a ball that are otherwise permitted by the rules, the player may also search for or identify a ball under Rule 12-1 as follows. So uh, if your ball is covered in sand, this is a general this description. It's not necessarily linked to in the hazard. It could be sand that's outside the hazard, uh, so it could be through the green in the hazard. Uh, but as Gene talked about last week, if it is covered in sand, you can search for it. Um, and if the ball moves, you know, that's all right. You know, while, while you're searching, you just put it back, recreate the lie, and um, play it. And when you do recreate the lie, you're able to leave a small part of the ball visible so that you can see it. Next situation is uh, covered when the ball is covered by loose impediments or thought to be covered by loose impediments. So we, again, talked about this yesterday, but this could also be in a, in a water hazard as well as a bunker. Um, so same thing here, a little bit different in that um, if, if, if the ball is found or identified, you have, you have to replace the loose impediments, so that's the same. But if the ball is moved during the touching or moving of the loose impediments while searching for or identifying the ball, rule 18-2 applies. So we would have a penalty if the player moves the ball while, while uh, a searching here. I think I mentioned this was a shitty rule last week. It is. It's still a shitty rule. It is. <laughs> I, I, I really hope this is your opinion. <laughs> it's, 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 really, it's really weird. You, you, have, you have a situation, you just go back one where they're, they're, you know, they're in a bunker, they're in a hazard, they can move the ball in some penalty. Here it's, it's, it's uh, in a hazard, but it is a penalty. And then you've got a situation where if it's through the grant, it's, it's just stupid. They just need to say, if you move the ball by accident, put it back and play it. I mean, it's yeah, not that complicated. It's okay. But there's so many places that eagle eye though that this applies. Right. Like, sure. Where you get in the long grass off the edge of the fairway, and you go in there and start moving around. The ball had been setting up in the grass. Mm -hmm. After you move the grass too far, the ball drops. The position of the balls change. Yep. Just. Just find the next piece of Heather and pop up the ball here to try to get you out of there. But yeah, no, I, 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 I agree with that. Yeah. Um, all right, so searching for the ball in water, in a water hazard. So this is a specific situation, and again, in the water hazard, in water. Uh, it's not just in casual water uh, outside of a hazard. It's, it's in water, in a water hazard. Um, again, so if the ball is moved in water, uh, and it's moved by accident, there is no penalty. Or the ball is re replaced. Um, however, if if you're searching or you're probing for the ball in the water and the ball isn't in the water and you kick it by mistake, so let's say you're, you're searching the water and the ball is in the bank in the grass and you kick it by accident, that's a penalty. Again, there, it's, it's a, it's a we do a great job to describe it. Yeah, I, I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly here, uh, within an obstruction or in an abnormal ground condition, uh, if the ball is lying in or on the obstruction or in an abnormal ground condition, so casual water for an animal pool or ground under repair, uh, you, and it's moved accidentally, there's no penalty, you put the ball back unless you're going to proceed under the rules uh, that, that apply to those situations. And then again, there, there, uh, there is no penalty there. So you can go crazy in the bunker when it's covered in sand. You can go crazy and draw it under repair, but you can't go crazy in a hazard. It, it doesn't make any sense, but it, it's, it's the way that it is. And you, and you can't see it under 12.1, but in the bunker you can leave a little bit right, of sand. Sure, quick. sure. Yeah. So hopefully this is this is one of the, the rules that the USGA <laughs> adjusts with their modernization project. If they don't, I think there'll be a lot of uh, unhappy people. Um, but they. 
they have adjusted it in the past, um, well, ever since I've been working in golf, so six or seven years or whatever it is. So they, they, have, they have made some slight adjustments to it over time. And that a penalty of a breach of Rule 12 1 is a loss of hole and yeah, stroke. I, I yep. last one just, just to make sure we understand the totally. If you get up to the sand track or the buffer or the hands of the river and you can see a little tiny piece of ball, you can't identify it without uncovering it. When you replay your thing, you got to be that same piece uncovered, even if you can't see it when you're taking your stance. Right. right. But if it's totally right. covered, you can choose where you make the piece available for the yeah. seat. So then you Cool. Right, right, exactly. As long as as long as the ball is is being able or is able to be seen from some angle, uh, then, then that's okay. But if it's completely unseen, then 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 yes, you can choose which loose impediment to. But it's got to be the same piece. Got to be visible after you recover things. Do Do we know why they changed the rule of playing a ball out of a hazard without identifying it? I know it was changed a few years ago. Yes. Do you know why? Because I mean, of the, the way a majority of the committee felt about it changed. <laughs> no, I'm very serious. You're right. That's, that's what they said. You're right. To me, oh that's God. the dumbest reason in the world to change a rule that's existed for a long time. But there's five people point. on the committee, three decided it should be the other way, so they changed it. Yes, allowing anybody to lift the ball in a hazard to identify it is nuts. Because you know it not doesn't go back exactly. <laughs> Never goes back exactly. <laughs> but the point is, there was no functional reason to change it. It wasn't no, like something that happened on TV and a thousand people right. wrote in. I think, I think maybe in their in their defense, maybe I'm, I'm not saying I support it. I'm just saying maybe it, they did it from a consistency standpoint that if you could do it on this part of the course, why not be able to do it here? So maybe it's just from that standpoint. And then, and then you also run into the situation of if if that player hits hits the the wrong ball and hazard, and you're not figuring it out until you go up on the green or you go up to where that ball is. Whereas if you yeah. mark it, you can find out right now. But, the, but that situation right. existed for the entire 50 or 100 years the other rule was in effect. Right. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying I agree with that one way or the other. But maybe the first, week after, the first week after they changed it, Tiger drove one into a wet bunker. I was watching on television, and mm -hmm. I thought, this is going to be interesting. And after he lifted it to identify it, and he just set it back, you know the suction wasn't there. Right. No. Right. Yeah. And that yeah. shot was so much easier. I mean, I just thought, well, that was a stupid change. Mm -hmm. Let him hit it. If it's not his ball, let him go back and find another one yeah. in there and hit that yeah. one. No Could penalty. Have hit six or seven. Yeah, no penalty. Yeah. 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 So I, I guess the you know the a takeaway other than uh, the way that the league puts it, which I think we can all agree, is that uh, <laughs> you know, the player, players need to be careful when they're when they're searching for a ball. Um, there, there are certain situations where they can you know, they can be aggressive, and there's others where you know where they're where they're not going to be. So sometimes if you see a player being aggressive in search, you may want to let them know that hey, if you do move the ball in this in this case, uh, you are going to get a penalty. You can, you can go in there and help them. Well, I, I mean, Gene, let the player I off heard the hook. say a number of times that um, to the golfer, when your ball is lying there on the ground, its fate is in your hands. Pick it up, and its fate is in my <laughs> hands. And I don't want did the responsibility. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Where else would I have gotten it? I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's good, Alex. I like that. I'm going to picture that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, good, good uh, intro here into lifting the ball for identification. So uh, the, the responsibility for playing the proper ball rests with the player. Each player should put an identification mark on their ball. So uh, keyword here is should. They don't. They don't have to. Obviously, we, we would recommend that they do because there's lots of situations in the rules uh, where they they could be penalized. Uh, or, or hurt by the fact that they can't identify which ball is theirs. Uh, so if the player believes that a ball at rest might be his, he can identify it. Uh, the player may lift the ball for, uh, for identification without penalty. The right to lift the ball for identification is in addition to the actions permitted under rules 12-1. Okay, so there, there is a procedure to when, uh, when this happens. So the, the player must announce their intention to, to lift and identify the ball uh, to their opponent or fellow competitor or marker in stroke play. Um, then they also need to mark the position of the ball 
So usually they'll use a key or a coin or something uh, to mark that. They can lift it, but they can't clean it. And then another thing, they need to make sure that their fellow competitor or opponent uh, has the ability to uh, witness this lifting and, and, and replacement, yep. Uh, now, question for you. If, let's say that this player, uh, you're, you're out there rules officiating and then player calls you over because they don't know, they're not sure if, uh, if this is a ball and, and, and they want to ask you if, if they can lift it to identify it. And, and you're there with them, uh, but their person that they're playing with is 75 yards mm -hmm. across the fairway. Does that does that per, does that player need to let that person let that person 75 yards away know that they're going to be looking at it and give them the chance to look at it? No, no. Yep. As long as as long as the rules officials there, we're good. So there, there's a there's a decision that's um, equivalent uh, for a ball fit ball and fit for play decision 5-3 slash 7 that uh, says that. So there's no need to bother that player over there 75 yards away probably looking for his ball and hazard or something like that. Uh, let him do or her do their thing so we can get play moving. As long as you're there, it's, it's all right. Would you suggest though that uh, you're, as a rules official, you then go over to his com fellow competitor or, or whoever is playing to tell him what you did? Told me, told me to just move the ball or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would probably do that if there was a ruling associated with it. If it was just listening to identify if it was his, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't go out of my way to do that, but I know other people would. I, I think it's just personal preference. I, I don't, I don't think you'd be obligated to, um, but, but definitely if there was, a, if there was some kind of ruling or something where the player maybe had to. To take a drop, or if, if it was unfit for play, to season that example, okay. and the player put a new ball in play, that would be one that you would want to tell uh, that, that other person to do. Kyle, ball sent it, it into a muddy lateral hazard. Number two, it doesn't run right hand side, right? where it gets really wet. It's hit into that hazard, he lifts it to identify it, and lifting to identify the ball. All the mud that's stuck to the bottom comes off as it comes up through the reeds. What are you doing now? Do your best to recreate it. I would have thought. I yeah, thought that would be my as best. Much as, possible. As, as, you, as you do your best to recreate the lie. No. But you, you can't pick up mud and stick it on the ball. Yeah, I, mean, just... I, think, I think in that case you would, and I think there's, there's a decision in here about, uh, about like rotating the ball, but you know, in, in that case it, it might be better for the player to just try to rotate the ball in, in position where it's at to be able to see, um, or if they just need to lift it just a little bit to, to see that purple mark or that mm -hmm. black mark that they put on, on underneath the tee and title list or something like that. Provided you budget. Yes, right. So I, I would say in that case, if you're there and you and you think that something might happen, to try to encourage them to move the ball as, as least as possible. So they, they can rotate. I don't. I, I thought I wrote down the decision. Maybe maybe it's towards the end. Yeah, it's twelve two point two slash two. Yeah. So yeah. So twelve yeah, twelve dash two slash two um, basically says that the player can rotate the ball to identify it, and that and that would be a good situation um, where you would probably recommend to that player. Um, that you can rotate it. Yeah. Rotate yourself instead. <laughs> yeah. You walk on the other side of the water. Yeah. Down the other side of the ball. <laughs> But it says there's a penalty for doing that. It, is the um, didn't mark is it. the old rule? He didn't mark it. Oh, if he no. didn't mark it, he I didn't mark. read the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. it's okay. yeah. It says he had marked it. It says he had marked it. Well, the only problem comes is that if there's a question of fact as to whether the ball was clean <laughs> by the action the player took. That's true. Yeah. I, I, I think that, you know, again, we're, we would probably just try to encourage them to move the ball as least as possible. And if it's but one of our golfers that likes to get in your face, the answer is, look, you want to lift it up, then you're going to have a question for the committee to decide right. as to whether you cleaned it. But you can rotate it and take that question out of it. Right. Now do what you want. Right. Kyle? Yeah. Um, is the old rule that playing a, a ball from a hazard that's not yours um, is okay and you can go back, or does this take that off the books? Yeah, so that so that was 
an old rule, but not with a new rule that you can identify a ball and a hazard. That's that's not the case. So they, they would get a penalty for, for hitting the wrong ball. You must identify. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, so that's a wrong ball. You gotta um, go back and find your ball, and if you tee off on the next hole, you played a wrong ball and you're disqualified. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if the player uh, goes through all these uh, procedures correctly, we don't have any penalty. If they don't uh, go through these procedures, uh, let's say that they forget to mark the ball, they just lift it without marking it. Um, that's going to be a, a one stroke penalty. And now, uh, however, if they uh, if the lifted ball is the player's ball, he must replace it. If he fails to replace it, he's going to incur a general penalty uh, for breach of 12-2, essentially playing from the wrong place there. But there's no additional uh, procedural penalty, just two strokes, not three. All right, and then this note here just uh, says that if the original live ball is uh, to be replaced has been altered. Uh, you know, rule 20-3B talks about how to recreate the Y as to our best, uh, <coughs> the best way to do that. Now, again, uh, breach of 12-2 uh, as a whole, loss, loss a hole for match play, two strokes and stroke play. If it's just a procedural breach, though, it's just one stroke. And if player incurs a general penalty, again here, uh, for breach of 12 Dash two, there is no additional penalty. So that maximum of two penalty there. Key decisions, uh, the one that we had talked about with the rotating the balls in there, 12 dash two slash two, but a few other ones in there as well. All right. Any questions about identifying the ball or uh, searching for a ball? Okay. Six, 16, the putting green. All right. Uh, so the line of putt must not be touched except in the following circumstances. The player can move loose movements, provided he doesn't press anything down. The player may place the club in front of the ball when addressing it, provided that he doesn't press anything down. So I believe Nick Price famously grounded the ball or grounded his club in front of the ball. That's all right. In measuring, uh, you can touch the, the green. That's or the line of putt. In lifting or replacing the ball, that's fine. To touch the line of putt. In pressing on a ball marker, not a problem. In repairing old pool clubs or ball marks on the, on the putting green. So key is there. Those are on the putting green. Um, if they're off the putting green, then the, those are off limits if it's going to affect your your play or your stance or your swing. And then in removing removal obstructions. So if you you know you can move the flag stick if it's on the putting green, you need to touch your line of putt when you're doing that. Yes. Yeah, a little while ago, you said something when you were talking about this on the green. I thought I heard you say now you can. Repair the spike mark. That's yeah, that's that's a, a suggested change of the rule. That's what I'm saying. So in, in 2019, that will most likely be a rule. That's that's what the rule says. Yeah, yeah. Right now, we still we still can't repair spike marks. Only old full plugs and ball marks. There was a question at rule school some number of years ago about the opponent deliberately stepping on his or her opponent's line of putt. That's not rule 16, that's the rule 1-2. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that one we would, would be able to uh, restore that, that line and then that player would most likely face the penalty. Yeah. 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 All right, uh, number 20, uh, number 20 uh, the disqualification. Right, the one exception, or another important thing uh, when touching the line of putt, uh, one thing that you can't do is indicate the line of putt by touching the putting green. Um, you can indicate the line of uh, by hovering over that that line, but you can't physically touch that spot. You can straddle that line and walk it from where your ball lies all the way to the hole. Everybody's well, that now. You can't mm -hmm. you, you can't walk on the line, but you can walk. You can straight, straight to the side. The, the problem is, if you have a big breaking putt, you have to determine whether or not your feet are in a position so that it would affect the movement of the ball. Right. Yeah. So, and, and we we're going to talk about that later. We'll just talk about it now because uh, you know that 
it's, it, it brings up the whole discussion of aim point, um, for people that are familiar with that. It's a, it's a green reading technique, basically, where the player, instead of trying to read the green with their eyes, they read it with their feet. And so they straddle the line, as uh, Tom was saying. Yeah, and, yep, Adam Scott uh, does it. Uh, there, you know, there's, there, there's, there's quite a few people that do it. Not as many now. I, I think it's more, personally, I think it's bad and it's just whatever. But um, there, you know, there is some, some good science to it. But, uh, you know, it, it does beg the question, how, how far does a player have to straddle the line? I mean, if it's a 15-year-old girl, I mean, you know, she might be standing two feet apart, and that, and that might be straddling the line for her. But for, for someone like me, two feet is going to be a, you know, a normal stance. So it, it, it kind of begs the question, how wide does that play that type of stand? Well, the, rules, the rule says a reasonable distance on either side of the line. Right. So that's why I say if it's a big breaking putt, you have to determine exactly what the line of that putt's going to be to know what that reasonable distance is going to be. Mm -hmm. or whether or not you may be stepping on the line of putt. Yeah, and I, I've told people, because I've taken it three or four times now, I never straddle. I'll, I'll be behind the ball, and I'll find the lowest part and then I read it off to the lowest part away from the line because what you're trying to do is feel the the percentage of break right in your legs feet sure. legs hips wherever you wherever you read it from mm -hmm. but there's one guy that straddles it right and I've told him so, so in your doing it. in your in your opinion do you, do you think he's just he doesn't he's not doing aim point correctly yes okay so, that, so, so people that are doing it correctly would go to that low point, like they're saying, yeah. not be on the line, so to speak. Staying off. But if, but if it's if it's a flat putt, there's really no difference between the low point and no. So if it's a three foot putt and someone's and Adam Scott's straddling, you don't need to be into the midpoint of it. At some, that point, you, you, some think, people do, you think if they're allowing you to, to repair spike marks, that they do with <coughs> all this stuff. If you can get down and fix a spike bar, what difference does it make whether you do a series? If your caddy goes up and points and touches the, the line of the putt, or you straddle the line, and you're right. well, well, what's, I mean, what's you the, take your putter head and you point cool and say, get it right here to your partner, this far above it, what's the difference? Yeah. I, mean, I don't understand the I, I, relevance I of the rule. I think probably it goes, it's hard to define. If you're going to allow the caddy to touch, can he make a little nice little trough all the way from the ball to the hole. You have to start doing a lot of definitions. That was the explanation when they came up with the can't kneel on the towel. If you are going to allow them to kneel on the towel, how many times can the towel get folded? Six plies, eight plies, pretty soon he's kneeling on a big step. It becomes a matter of defining what's allowed. That's their reasoning behind things. So, well, but the same is true if you start eliminating things yeah. that have been already been defined. You know? Yeah. So, which, where, my, that's my question. Where do you stop? Or why, I know. why are you stopping anywhere? I know. You know, I, I think it seemed to me it would be a lot easier to define you can't make a trough to the, <laughs> of the line of your putt. Well, try and sit down and write one at one time. It's not easy so, it's not. to cover all situations. Um, you got you got super excited people like us ready to come up with something to be counterfactual, right? So, well, like this dropping the ball from any distance. I mean, what are they going to say? One inch, ten inches, waist high. That's different for each person. They can't do something like that. Waist high, you can drop it your waist. That's what I mean. Is, is, is that can't use that. I mean, it's, Got to wait and see what they say. Why don't they just go to place? Why don't they just go to place? I mean, this, I think I think that would be nice. But, dropping from any. That kind of takes off the whole yeah. randomness and play it as it lies. Play it as it lies. Like yeah, so. I know. <coughs> I think they're messing it'll be, with it'll be fire. interesting. All right, so lifting and cleaning the ball. The ball and the putty green may be lifted and cleaned if desired. Uh, must be marked and the ball must be replaced. Okay, so uh, the only exception, uh, there, there are a few exceptions to that. Uh, when, a, when another ball is in motion, a ball that might influence the movement of the ball in motion must not be lifted. And so 16-1B slash 4 talks about a few other exceptions uh, or a situation where that uh, lifting the ball that might influence um, might may not be a penalty. It just really depends on uh, the, the uh, point of the ball uh, when that ball is lifted. 
the point of the other ball in motion when you when you the player lifts the, the other ball that might influence it. So it's it's a good decision. I would definitely recommend reading through that. Um, now uh, repairing old hole plugs, ball marks, and other damage. So you can do uh, an old hole plug a damage to, to the putting green caused by an impact of the ball. Uh, whether or not your ball is on the putting green is, is not important. It's where it's, it's where the damage is. If the, if the damage is on the putting green, you can fix it. <clears throat> now uh, you can't fix other damage. So other damage, uh, mammal imprints. So it could be humans, could be um, deer. Those those you can't fix. But there is this new local rule now with, with deer or other similar type animals that if that's in place, uh, then you could. But prior, without that local rule in place, so that, that would be an example of something that would not be able to be fixed. Or if, let's say... Uh, so I, again, you're falling into the shitty rule again. <laughs> <laughs> I can fix a little spike mark that's a, you know, a half of a millimeter in diameter, but I can't... Fix a uh, gouge, a gouge yeah. from uh, the Grand Canyon the dog yeah, or the skunk that's <laughs> out. <laughs> With the mole, can, uh, can I ask a question that's maybe just a hair off? Sure. But at Western, in the fall, you get a lot of skunks that are digging, digging mm -hmm. for grubs. Is that considered ground under repair? If your ball lands into that torn up area, the skunk is not a bird. I don't think the ground is not a bird. So that has to be a local rule. Yep. Yeah. You have to make it ground under repair. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's kind of like flower beds, right, Gene? What? Kind of like flower beds. Yes. Yeah. Well, sort of the exact opposite of a flower bed, but the same principle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not pretty in the ground store. Up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
So that's that. not not uh, considered in improving your line of play. Right. Now on on the putting green, uh, that that's that's not. Uh, but let let's say for example you you hit the fringe and, and you and you spun back, um, and it was directly in your way. You you couldn't fix that that yeah. pitch mark. Um, that's that's on the fringe only only on the putting green. Whether it's yours or it had been there. Been there. Right. Right. Yep. Oh my. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, no worries. In that situation, if, somebody, if your ball's already laying there and somebody else hits the ball, that creates some of the marks that come to your ball. You should, like, that's, you're entitled to lie you had and your ball got there. So you should stop the time. Right? Yeah, I, I think so. Fairly yeah. taking your steps. Fairly taking That's a good point. Now you would have to be able to, to determine that, you know, that, that, that happened after the shine, which uh, if, if someone's ball is there and hit around yeah. there, it'd probably be pretty easy to do that. What? Wait, 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 wait. wait. No. Uh, you, I don't think you can. Jeff, straight. So my ball's on. I'm in the fringe. And my opponent plays. He hits. The ball hits in the fringe. You're saying I can repair that ball. So let's say I play first. I'm, I'm, I'm in the fairway. I, I play to the green and I hit it. And in my pitch mark there, and I, and I spin back, and my pitch mark is in the fringe. Yeah. Um, but. It's it's not in my way because my ball. Well, let's say it is in your. Let's say it is in your. Okay, so mine mine is different. I can't fix mine, but let's say that my ball is already in place. Let's say I didn't I didn't have a pitch mark. I just hit it up there and rolled up there. But then Jeff hit and he created a pitch mark after my ball was already there and then rolls back. So you think? I think yes. I think I think you'd be entitled to that lie. You're entitled to and stuck with the results of your last shot. To me, it's like. Your ball's in a bunker. You cannot remove a loose impediment. But if I'm playing and I take a divot, my divot lands on top of your ball, you can remove that divot. You're entitled to and stuck with the results of your last shot. Kyle, it's really hard to hear when a bunch of people are talking. Really? When you, you started that and you said that your ball is already off the green, another player's ball comes in, leaves a mark between along your line. Are you saying you can fix his ball mark in the fringe? We're saying that that, that you're entitled to, to, to the lie, or you're entitled to, to the lie that you had uh, when your ball came yes. to rest. Um, and, for, and this this would be a situation that it was caused. It wasn't a natural cause. It was, it was some other outside agency that caused it. So, with that being said, you could you could fix that mark and play. Provided that your your ball was in place first. Thank you, Kyle. What hap what happens if if that improves uh, his line as well? Um, so he he gets the advantage of your ability to fix it, right? I, I would yeah. I would say it depends on where his ball. That would be the case, I mean, I mean, Maybe if I, mean, I don't I don't know for sure. I mean, you could always have that person play first so that they could be affected by that and fix it after, but. I don't. I don't know if there's if there's a decision saying that that's the proper way to do it. Um, yeah, I would. Yeah, you can't, you can't determine that. if that pitch mark was from your ball or your opponent's ball. Yeah, if if that's the case, Tom, then 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 you wouldn't uh, be able to fix it if you. If but, you but you can't determine whether that. I mean, if the pitch marks are so close together, you can't determine. Right. Whether. Yeah, no, if you if you couldn't determine, then then you wouldn't be able to fix it. But let's say that 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 my you know my shot didn't leave a pitch mark, um, or or I I uh, I chunked a chip and and uh, you know Jeff hit a hit a shot or something. I mean, so it, 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 you would you would have to be able to identify and, and be a hundred percent certain that that pitch mark is is theirs. Thirteen dash two slash eight. Two slash eight. Mm-hmm. You're entitled to and stuck with the results of your last shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if there's doubt. Probably this book would say you're going to rule uh, against the player, you know, if there's reasonable doubt. 
got to prove that it applies. Yeah. So here it says that if it's done before my ball gets there, I can't repair it. But if it's done after my yep. ball gets there, I can repair it. Yep. So general rule. Yep. Yep. And, and, but if you can't determine the last shot. shot. Yeah, it's not common if you, if you like can't determine the sand that, off the frame. Then you would not be allowed to fix it in front of your ball. All right. That yeah. player right behind you took a sand shot. Sand. Oh, yeah. Your ball. yeah. Same thing sand. with the sand. All right. Well, uh, standing, ball, standing astride. Or uh, on the line of putt, so a player must not uh, make a stroke in the putting beam from the stance to stride, or either foot touching the line, of, the line of putt or an extension of that line behind the ball. So, uh, yep. So I uh, I was going to show you a video, um, but maybe maybe we'll, we'll pass the next to running a long time. But base uh, Sam Snead, and then also now uh, Bryson DeChambeau, who won the 2015 U.S. Amateur. He has also been. Uh, dabbling and in, in, in putting this way, so he he stands to the the left of the ball side and and side saddles it. Yeah, he straddles it while he's lining it up, but then he mm -hmm. side saddles. It. Right. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And so he he can do that. He does it, and he actually uh, there, there's there's some interesting videos that uh, well there's there's a video if you guys you know can look at it later if you like, but uh, he he rolls in some fairly long putts, which is just. Oh. Um, he, he he also plays with all all of his irons are the exact same way. So he's he's built from a different uh, mold and he's a uh, very intelligent uh, person. So uh, you know what 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 works for him might not work for everyone else. Yeah. Right. Uh, you have a club manufacturer making clubs that way this year, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, so do that. Uh, Cobra. Cobra's the one. Cobra's his sponsor, yeah. Cobra's yeah. Sponsor, yeah. Yeah, they were. I, 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 well, yeah, the one set. The one set of metal woods was nine hundred dollars, eight ninety nine, and they have them all made to one length with the different lofts and everything. It was twenty eight. <laughs> So Bill Smith was selling those, and that's not where they were going out of business. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know if the, if the characteristic of the shaft varies? I mean, otherwise, why not just buy nine shafts that are the same length and not cut them? No. That's what I mean. Is there a different characteristic yeah, to the shaft? Probably. Weighted, from what I read. Okay. The, the heads are weighted. The heads are weighted. Yeah. So shaft shafts might change. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So then there there is uh, an exception. We we talked about the sides uh, saddle, uh, but also if, if a player is doing it, uh, if, if they're doing it inadvertently or they're doing it to not uh, step on another player's line, that's that's fine as well. All right. Making a stroke while another ball is in motion. So the player must not make a stroke while another ball is in motion after a stroke from the putting green. Except that if the player does so, there is no penalty if it was his turn to play. So if there's a ball in motion on the putting green, um, that, that was a putt on the putting green, and another person cannot putt unless it was their turn to play. Or hit out of a bunker. It's from anywhere. Oh, it's from anywhere. Okay. Yeah. That's a good point. So from anywhere. So it doesn't matter if it's. Uh, you could be on the fringe. Right. Now, would that, Gene, would, would that apply to a, a ball from another group? No. Okay. No. So only, so only the group that yeah. you're playing. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Uh, an exception to that is lifting the ball or assisting the play uh, while another ball is in motion. Uh, that one's a little bit different. So you do uh, play another or uh, make a stroke at a ball while another ball is in motion. The putting mean that'll be a two stroke penalty provided that it's not your turn to play. And also in 16-1, um, the position of the caddy or partner is the same rule that we talked about in 14 applies to the putting green as well. And then the wrong, the wrong putting green, um, you would, that's, that's different. You're, you're not allowed to play from the wrong putting green. All ball overhanging the hole. All right, so uh, when any part of the ball overhangs the lip of the hole, the player is allowed enough time to reach the hole without unreasonable delay and an additional 10 seconds to determine whether the ball is at rest. All right, so if they, if they put it up there, they're able to uh, you know, react to their putt not going in and sitting on the lip. 
throwing out their hands, walk up to the hole, and at that point they get 10 seconds. If the ball does not go into the hole at that point, it's deemed to, to be at rest and not in the hole. Um, after those 10 seconds if the ball were to fall in the hole, uh, they would have to put the ball back on the lip, put it out, and then go to the next hole. Now what happens if, if they didn't go back, if they don't put the ball back on the no, lip? They don't put it back, Kyle. Huh? If by going. then the ball hasn't fallen, it's deemed to be at rest, if it's subsequently. Oh, sorry. Have to put it back. Sorry, th uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and then it's um, one stroke. Right, right. so, sorry, so. Yeah, um, but it's whole. As if you, it's whole, so it's as if you had putted it in. Right, it's, it's, it's as if you put it in, but you had a pound. You're going to get one more, no matter what you do. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. So just to, just, just to clarify, um, if it falls in after that 10 seconds, um, then, then it would be deemed hold but one stroke penalty. If it falls in before that 10 seconds, it's deemed to be hold, no penalty. And then uh, undue delay, we're not uh, sitting here waiting for forever. Um, we have, they, they get a reasonable amount of time to get to the hold, and then that 10-second clock starts. Uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Dan's got a question. Yeah. Because it says if, if uh, by then the ball has not fallen in the hole, the player is deemed to have pulled out with his last stroke and must add a penalty stroke. So on R4, I'm on a two, I put it up there, and it sits right on the edge. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and then point. after 10 seconds, it then falls in. Yeah, it's deemed that I had made the Putt, but I get a penalty stroke for a score of four. Uh, I, yes. uh, so there's a sentence missing. There. Yeah, exactly. There's a sentence, sentence there's missing. There's read sentence. the book. Yeah, read so it. In the book. So that's that's uh, my fault. Is typing that out. Um, so yeah. So in the book, um, what what the slide should say is uh, he has 10, 10 seconds to determine whether the ball is at rest. If by then the ball has not fallen into the hole, it is deemed to be at rest. If the ball subsequently falls into the hole, the player is deemed to have pulled out with his last stroke and must have a penalty stroke to score to the hole. Otherwise, there's no penalty under this rule. Thank you for pointing that out. So you're telling me it's five or four? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. So after 10 seconds, if he taps in, you're going to get a penalty before 10 you know you before 10 if you tap in you're going to be a four it's always going to be a four it's always going to be a four okay yep that's what I want to make sure yeah, before 10 if before 10 the ball falls in it's a three it's a three yeah if it doesn't fall in it's at rest at, it's at rest and then it falls in now it's, it's a four. deemed to have gone in in three with a penalty stroke for still a yep. four, I mean, yep. yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me because under the new local rule, I mean, if a ball moves, oh, no. there's a penalty for it. No, 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 there. no, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that well, way. yeah, well, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if someone else wants to take it, but I mean, that would be it's, it's a little bit different because it's, it's accidental and this is. Yeah. Natural causes. So it was actually a stroke to force the ball right. to move. That's whether or not it came to rest after the All right, key decisions from 16. Oops, sorry. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question about that uh, F. Yeah. That's the what? F. F. If if I'm on the put, if a player is on the putting green, he is uh, thirty feet from the uh, from the hole. And another player is on the fringe, and he's 15 feet from the hole. And the player that's on the green putts, and at the same time, the player that's on the fringe doesn't understand closest to the hole chips. What's the penalty? 
Yeah. How far away were they? Well, the one off the green was 15, but he's off the green, and he thinks it's his turn to play. And the one on the green is 30 feet away, but it's his turn to play because he's further from the green. You see what I mean? And so I putt because I'm 30 feet away. It's my turn to play, but the one on the fringe that's closer to the ball uh, chips. Is it Who gets the penalty in middle play? Match play or, is it match play or stroke play? I don't know. I don't think it makes any difference. Yes, it does. Yes, it well, does. When you recall it, but I mean, uh, so let's say it's stroke play. Then what's the what's the penalty? Stroke play, no penalty. Stroke. 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 Yeah. The guy that's putting. How far away is the guy that's putting? Thirty feet. That's putting is sixteen. 15 feet. He's 15 feet. 30 feet and away. The guy from the fringe is, is no, no, chipping. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, the guy from right. the fringe is, is 15 feet, oh. 25 away. The okay. guy that's putting is 30 feet. Okay. So if, if, if a guy that putts first from, from 30, he, he putts first. And then, then the, the other guy the gets, the gets the penalty. Chips, right. He gets the penalty. He gets a two strokes. He gets two yes. strokes, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ooh. All right. That's what I wanted to know. Yep. Yep. Oh, because yeah. it's Okay. I have one question, please. Yeah, go ahead, Doug. Uh, they, um, some of the newer courses are building these double greens. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens when the when the ball is hit so badly it's on uh, what I would call the wrong green? Yeah. For the I, I think it's not a part of I your. I think management. that would that would come down to the, to how, how the committee is defining that green. So if, if if we have a double green, we're probably going to de define half of that green as, as a, a wrong putting green. Um, if, if the committee doesn't define it as a wrong putting green, I think in theory you would, you would have the same rule under 16-1 F there. But if, if the committee defined it as a wrong putting green, then I think you wouldn't have any issues. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, it kind of makes sense, but uh, uh, how do they handle it? Do they announce it at the beginning of the – uh, the tournament? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sir. So uh, there, there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, the way that, that it's done here at the GAM is, is we'll go to the to the midpoint of the green and we'll, we'll put two uh, irrigation flags to signify uh, the the line that kind of marks the, uh, the a start and end of the green, I guess, so to speak. So uh, on, on one side of those flags would be the, the wrong putty green, on the other side would be the, the putting green of the hole being played. Uh, so that's that's how we would define it. We would put it in our in our local rule sheet that we give out to the players um, on the first tee, and it would probably be something that comes to the players as well. Okay. Okay. I, uh, so assume all. then, assume then that the, the the player that is on the wrong putting green mm. is then required to take a putt right. from the uh, if he's going to make a stroke with a, anything other than a putter. So if it's a wrong putting green, that, that player would not be allowed to hit from that from the putting green. They have to take their it would not be allowed. Off. Would not be allowed to hit from that. All right. If it, it was deemed a wrong putting green. Kyle, yeah. I, I would hope that you would put two dots, pink dots, rather than have flags sticking up there. Yeah, no, I mean that's you know, that that's other way it's been done. There's they we've also I've also worked for organizations that put stakes up on the green. There, there's lots of ways to do it, but definitely uh, you know, having having some way to identify uh, you know, what would happen if, uh, if if those stakes or those flags yeah. did get removed. We all like that. Well, sometimes no way we have to designate it as the wrong putting green either. And there are situated in Scotland. They're right on the same thing. You take it all on the same thing. You drop it. It doesn't have to be free. Yeah. Yeah. You just chip. Yep. Preserves the green, too. Mm hmm. We get that. All right. Seven. Uh, anything else on 16? Let's get done here. We'll get to 17 really quick here. All right, so flag stick intended to remove your held up before <coughs> making a stroke anywhere on the course. So key anywhere on the course, the player may have the flag stick intended removed or held up to indicate the hole. So 
Uh, Phil Mickelson famously, I think it, I don't remember where it was, but he had uh, bones go up and ten ten the flags from his eighty yard pitch shot. Um, it's a you know, typical Phil thing. Um, I love Phil, so you know, God, God bless him, but uh, a little ridiculous. But you can't do it anywhere on the course. It doesn't have to be on, uh, on the green or off the green. It can be anywhere. Sure. If the flag stick is not attended, removed, or held up before the player makes a stroke, it must not be attended, removed, or held up during the stroke while the player's ball is in motion. If doing so might influence the movement of the ball. Right? No, so when when is it deemed to be attended? So this this note kind of explains that. If the flag stick is in the hole and anyone stands near it while strokes are being made, he is deemed to be attending the flag stick. So the definition that defines what near means is 17 1 slash 1. And that basically says that if a player is standing and can reach the flag, they're deemed to be attending it. So that's kind of your definition of what the stand near or near means. If prior to the stroke, the, the flag stick is attended, removed, or held up by anyone with the player's knowledge, and he makes no objection, the player is deemed to have authorized it. So if, if I don't ask someone to, to attend the flag and they're up there standing holding the flag and attending it, if I don't tell them to get away, don't do that, please, I'm, I'm saying that it's okay for him to do that. And the flag stick is attended. Now, if anyone attends or holds a flag stick while the stroke is being made, uh, they are deemed to be attending the flag stick until that ball comes to rest. And so that will come into play uh, once we get to figure out when it, what when uh, is a penalty when someone's attending the flag stick. What has to happen for a penalty to be involved? Now, the exception to that is uh, moving intended and removed. Uh, or held up flag stick while the ball's in motion. So that, basically that's just saying that it's okay uh, for us to take the flag out if we do attend it. Unauthorized attendance. So if an opponent or his caddy in match play or a fellow competitor or his caddy in stroke play without the player's authority or prior knowledge attends uh, or removes or holds up the flag stick during the stroke or while the ball's in motion, the act uh, and the act might influence the movement of the ball. The opponent or the fellow competitor incurs the applicable penalty. So not the player that's actually hitting the shot, but the person that is attending the flag stick. So that's when it's unauthorized. Okay, so a good a good decision uh, that determines kind of when the ball may influence or, or what might influence uh, the movement of the ball is decision 17-2/2. Do you want to read that one? That's a good one. It kind of talks about again. It, uh, it really comes down to when when the flag is uh, starting to be a tender, or you know, where the ball is at at, at that point. Um, that kind of determines. So, for example, if, if someone is sixty feet away and they and they hit a putt and it it's going to be woefully short, twenty feet short, and before it comes to rest, someone goes up and grabs the flag. You know that there's no there's no issue there. Um, but, however, if it might influence the movement of the ball, then we, then we might have an issue. Which um, happened to Boo Weekly in 2007. I forget which tournament that happened at, but basically, um, and he, was, he was just doing the nice thing, or what he thought was a nice thing. Uh, the player was putting, I think they were 80 feet away on the putting green, and it, looked, it was looking like the, the ball wasn't hit the flag sticker. It had, it had a chance 20 feet out or so. Blue Weekly knew that it was going to be a penalty if, 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 if it hit the flag. So he ran up to the green and pulled, pulled the flag out, trying to save the player from getting the penalty. Well, the ball didn't end up hitting the flag stick, but they ruled that it could have um, influenced the movement of the ball. So unfortunately, Blue <laughs> Weekly was given the penalty, not the person right. was playing, which. Again, I think it's ridiculous, and hopefully that some of these new rules will uh, get, you know, get, get rid of that. But mm -hmm. that was an instance where the attendance was unauthorized. So not the person that was putting, but the person that actually did the um, unauthorized attendance get penalized. And there's a good, good uh, article um, that's listed here that kind of go. It, it, it just talks about the situation, uh, but it, it also you know booze great and he. He handles the situation really well. The rules official says, I, you know, I've never seen anyone that's handled this as well as he did. And, uh, anyways, it, it, 
it kind of felt like a bad thing that, that happened to him. He's trying to do the right thing, but he got penalized for it. But um, hopefully the new rules will take care of this. But uh, in stroke play, if a breach of this rule 17-2 occurs and the competitor the competitor's ball uh, subsequently strikes the flag stick, again, the person that's holding it or, uh, or, or sorry, strikes the flag stick, the person attending or holding it or anything carried by him, the competitor incurs no penalty. And so the, again, the competitor doesn't get a penalty and the ball is played as it lies, except if it's on the putting green and the stroke is canceled and they replay. So there'd be no penalty there if the person did happen to hit the flag stick or whatever, since it was unauthorized. All right, um, now that, that gets me thinking, and Gene, I'll ask you, I'll ask this to do. If that, let's say that the person ten, ten, it goes up and tends the flag stick and never actually removes it, and the ball hits the flag stick, would that be, I mean, that would, that would still be a penalty, right? It's considered mm -hmm. to be a penalty. He's really at arm's distance. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the guy at the player. That's the player. So even if it was on off, right? So even if that person went up, went up to it. It, de it depends on who the person is. Who are you talking about? His partner? His caddy? His who? Oh, well, let's just say it was, it was a fellow competitor, and he. So let's say let's say Boo Weekly did what he did, it, but instead of taking out the flag stick, he he just he kept it in there, and he actually he was holding the flag stick, and he never removed it, but the ball went in and hit the flag stick. Who who gets the penalty there? The guy that hits the flag stick. The guy that hits the flag stick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, but if but if if Boo Weekly pulled out the flag stick before the ball got there, then Boo Weekly would get penalty because it was unauthorized attendance. Yeah, oh, it was unauthorized. <coughs> yeah. If he's standing within the arms of the yeah, he's standing within the arms of the he's considered the author. Yeah. Well, okay, but, 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 but let's say that we use the Boo Weekly situation and Boo yeah. Weekly runs up and he grabs, he, he, he thinks, I, mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know why he would do this, but let's say he's, oh, it, it, it might reflect that he runs up there and gets within standing distance or is touching it, but never actually pulls the flag stick out of the floor. No, I don't think the. the Player who hits the shot gets penalized if it's no, unauthorized. Well, it's no. it's it's the, the who weekly wouldn't be penalized either. How can he be penalized? If, 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 if the guy that hits the ball on the green. Yeah, he's on the green. Okay, so you hit a, a putt, and for whatever reason, I take off and run towards the flag stick. Maybe to watch your line of, I don't know, whatever reason I am, and if I don't. Pull the flag stick out, and you didn't tell me to pull it out. Am I going to be penalized? No, no I no. am. I am. You, yeah, you would be penalized. Mm -hmm. you yeah. play, play away. Yep. Not the one that ran up there for no so reason. You want to get close enough to be considered the flag. No. I mean, if, I, if, he, if she hits a putt, and I, after she strikes the ball, I run up there, and I'm standing from here to there just to watch it. I'm not going to be penalized. Then it shouldn't be. If he's standing that close to it, even if he didn't grab it or take it out of the hole, I, there are too many things. And the act may might influence the movement of the ball. So if you're just looking at it, then I'm not. And we determine that you didn't influence it. <laughs> you didn't hold the flag stick. And I wasn't. You were you were attending, but you didn't influence it. How do they determine that who influenced it? Because you don't ask a fellow competitor every time to tend the flag. It's right. just automatic when you're playing. Right. So I, I, think I, I, think, I think the way that they rule was when when he pulled the flag stick out, right. at that point where the ball was, there, there was a reasonable chance that the ball could have been could have hit the flag stick. And so at that point, they said it's kind of enough. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I see. Was so, that off the green? Or the guy was on the green? No, no, no. The guy was on the green. Yeah. So, I don't know. I've got <laughs> several stars on the paragraph. I have always hated that paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> That's one you gave us all notes on it. I got my notes. I just, you have your notes? <laughs> yes. Don't worry about yeah. it. All right. No, no, um, and really quickly, we can't we can't bring up Boo Weekly without showing this short video of Boo Weekly at the Ryder Cup. So hopefully it will go. Oh, he's right. Is he right? 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 Is he
with his white socks. Doing this at the Ryder Cup. It's a drag. At, at Valhalla. Yeah. yeah. This is the reason one that the two, you got penalized, really. <laughs> <laughs> all, the older all the same. So all, all one of the same. <laughs> Just the one where you got penalized. It's sort of like doing too much dancing in the end zone. Exactly. Yep, yep. Who's three last names? Who, Bubba, and who's the third? They went to school to go with the high school to go. Oh, oh good right. grief. Oh, yeah, you're a right. 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 Man, that high school got the water there. Not bad. Bad guy, Florida. <laughs> uh, the player's ball must not strike. The flag stick when it's attended. Removed or held up. The person attending or holding up the flag stick or anything carried by him. Uh, or the flag stick in the hole unattended when the stroke has been made on the putting green. Can I say something there? Or yeah. maybe you're going to. You see that be the person attending or holding up the flag stick or anything carried by him. This could be your caddy. It could be a fellow competitor. It could be an opponent. Suppose he's got a tee stuck behind his ear and it drops off and your putted ball hits that tee. This rule governs that not rule 19, ball in motion deflected by your own equipment. <laughs> that would be a one-stroke penalty. This is a two-stroke penalty. If it was your opponent and you'd putted it, you'd, you'd be allowed to re-putt and all that stuff. So don't get into rule 19 here. If this happens when you're out there, it's just a two-stroke penalty. And so the, the question is that when it says the person uh, attending or anything carried by him, does that does that mean carried by him at the moment? Or let's say that guy had a really terrible putt and I hit, I hit his, his bag. Is that is that a penalty? Because he's technically catching. I think, I think it, it's at, at, at the moment he's attending. Moment. If he drops your towel on right. your ball after right. you've putted it, or something falls out of his pocket, right. or the tee from behind his ear, or his hat blows off and hits your putted ball. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it means. Gotcha. But it is this rule, because you can get into all kinds of stuff under Rule 19 that doesn't apply here. If it's your opponent that's doing the attending and he drops the tee, <laughs> you might do it on intention, hoping your ball would hit it so you get two stroke penalty. Uh, well, I don't think you would have your opponent's caddy uh, attend the flag for you in a match. No. I wouldn't. But you may have your opponent. Well, you your your opponent, opponent have have to caddy. Yeah. yeah. If, caddy, so. Well, you get the penalty unless you can determine that he did it intentionally. Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I'd go back to one dash two. You might just lose the whole. The under one dash two, I think you can do whether it's stroke or not. I think so. Yeah. So I think I thought you could you could uh, modify. But See, we'll if it's your caddy and it's your tee that he dropped out of his ear and hit your ball, that would be only a one stroke. But this says it's two. So this this rule governs. Yeah. Yeah. So if we're playing a stroke play, then. And I'm putting, and you, you're mm -hmm. attending the flag. Mm -hmm. and I've not said anything to you, so you're authorized, at least by, mm -hmm. by lack of description. And I put the ball, and it hits the flag stick. You get penalized. I get penalized. Mm -hmm. You remove the flag stick? If I don't remove the flag stick, you get penalized. If I'm la la land watching the birdies and don't get it out, you get penalized. The only time you wouldn't get penalized if I leave it in there intentionally so that you get penalized. And Gene, I yes. think good that we emphasize this is a shot from any place on the course because I saw at a Curtis Cup a shot uh, made a, a chip shot from off the green and hit the uh, player attending the flag stick on the green. They lost the hole. Yep. Absolutely. Any place on the course. So it's not a putting. It's not just putting. Nope. It's a shot. And that's why you see players go like this when somebody goes up and grabs a hold of the flags to get away. 
I'm off the green. Right. I don't want anybody near the flag stick. Right. All right. Uh, the exception uh, to this is when the flag stick is attempted to be removed or held up without the player's authority. So if it's unauthorized, uh, you won't have any issues. There won't be a penalty to the player if one of those three things happens. It does happen. So a two-stroke penalty and the ball must be played as it lies. And stroke play and match play loss of hold. And then uh, Steve, Steve Parks had mentioned uh, decision 17 uh, dash three slash three, is that right? Slash two. Slash, slash two. Yeah. Uh, that, that talks about uh, kind of how we were talking about earlier with uh, the player failing to remove it, whether it was intentional or not. So that's, that's definitely a good one to, to look over. It's on page 264. All right, so, um, you know, I was getting a little ahead of myself earlier, but uh, ball resting up against the flag stick. So when a player's ball rests against the flag stick in the hole, um, and the ball is not pulled, the player or another person authorized by him may move or remove the flag stick, and the ball falls in the hole, uh, the player is deemed to have hold out with the last stroke. Otherwise, the ball, if moved, must be placed in the lip of the hole without penalty. So in this case, if a player, the ball is sitting in between the, the lip and the, and the uh, flag stick, but not completely below the, the halfway. hole, halfway, and they just, just they just go up, they pick it out, and they go to the next hole, and they tee off, and they finish the round. What do we have there? DQ. Yep. So they're they're, they're going to be DQ'd because they didn't they didn't hole out um, because. For whatever reason, I guess the rules think that the player can't make that short putt from the lip of the hole. Yeah. We have to penalize the well, player so so brutally. But maybe yeah. that will be changed. But if but they catch it before he tees off on the next hole, he can. Then, then it's fine, right? Yeah. If, yeah. So it, that that'd be the same thing that when we're talking about. But read that again. If you read the in the decisions, mm -hmm. when players' balls rest against the flag in the hole. And the ball is not whole. The player, another authorized person by him, may move or remove the flag stick. And if the ball falls into the hole, the player is deemed to have holed out with right. his last stroke. Mm -hmm. right. right? So at that point, the ball, if I go to pull it out and the ball falls down, I'm yeah. holed out. Right. Yep. Right? But if, it, but if it doesn't fall down, but if you down, jerk you out the flag and the ball pops out, and you just and that's, oh, that's it pops out. Yep. Yeah, okay. that's the reason why you, whenever you put it, always just sort of you, slowly you, move it. Right. You wait and, for the ball to fall right. down because if you were to pull it out, it would. So now if you go to 16 3, ball embedded in the side of the hole. Because oh. I've seen this where a ball flew into the hole, <coughs> yeah. it, in, it embedded into the side of the hole. No, it stayed in. No, it didn't hold didn't hole out because it wasn't all the way completely down. But it, now it's embedded into the side of the hole and it's still there. Yep. And the same thing because now it says it's a ball below the surface. Yeah, it says that it is not it is not hold. Well this you doesn't say it's hold either. It says the flag stick is in the hole. Right. It, it doesn't say the ball is hold. So it doesn't say the ball is in the um, hole. Like let's say that the that the, the, the ball was stuck between the the, the lip and but it wasn't okay. below the level of the hole. Right. right. Then, so now I pull it out and it falls down, it's hole. It yep. Okay, right. but if I try to do the same thing here under 16.3, Gene, where yeah, it's but embedded. It's not the, I know, but it's not a flagstick holding it out. The ball has to be all oh, within right. the circumference of the hole, all below the level of the ground and, I, and at rest. I understand, but so, if I go to pull that hole out, or the flag out, yep. and the ball falls down. Yep, your hole. I'm still holding, yep. even though that was embedded in there at that time. This doesn't have any, it's not talking about any flag stick. Okay. But I guess I'm questioning if it was embedded and I pull the flag out. You're still not hold according right. to that. Right. I would, I would say that that decision would, would uh, supersede okay. 17. And All right. You'd yep. place the ball on the lip. Yep. Wow. Okay. And then if you didn't place it on the lip, Right. You didn't correct it. Okay. All right. 
All right. Yes. Uh, some other key decisions in 17 there. A couple of them we've already talked about. Just a few others. Oops, sorry. All right, I think uh, we'll keep you guys here any longer if, unless anyone has any questions on uh, 17, but next week we'll go over 20, rule 20 and 15. Um, so two, well, only two rules next week, but two uh, important ones and uh, difficult ones. So we'll uh, get the, the video working next week because I do have a video that I want to show um, that's okay. key to the to dropping. So um, yeah, we'll get that fixed on. I apologize if that wasn't working, but uh, thanks, thanks for coming out today. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll